Hey, welcome everybody. Let me get these stupid things off. I, I started talking to the camera, so Doodle ran into the room because obviously he knows there's snacks. Welcome everybody to another Trippy Food live stream. He's just jumping. He's like he's like a Mexican bean over here. Hang on, hang on, Doodle. Come here, come here, come here. There, you get to say hi. You say hi. Over there. Over there, Doodle. Over there. Over there. Doodle. Over there. Okay. Yeah, he can. Uh, I I don't know if he smells food up here. He knows there's food because he hears me talking to nobody. Um, I mean, I'm not calling you nobody. I'm saying there's nobody physically in the room. And he hears me talking, and he's assuming that there there's a snack for him. I do have his snacks. I do have Doodle snacks here. So we again, one, once again, joined by a cast of Doodle. And uh, it is. Uh, hey, welcome to the room, Janice. Good to see you. Uh, it is. July 3rd, so it is the day before Independence Day, which for those of you who are out of the country, which is nobody as far as I can tell right now, uh, uh, which for those of you who are in who are in the United States, uh, it, it tomorrow is a holiday. It is Independence Day, and it uh, marks the independence of the 13 original colonies um, as um, uh, in, in forming the United States, 13 of them. So basically, Florida, Texas, California, you were all part of Spain. Alaska, you were part of of Russia. So, you know, like, yeah, I would, I, I don't blame you if you're not like overly excited about this and anything. It's those 13 original colonies they get to celebrate. Now I am looking at my, my mouth here on the camera and hearing my voice and seeing that there's a little tiny bit of a lag. Are you guys getting that as well? Are you guys getting a lag? Hey, Peter Griffin in the room. We were just talking about independence from the UK, uh, being that, uh, this is the, the eve of, um, of independence day, but, uh, but welcome. That was years ago. God, welcome, Adam. Adam Heb to the room. Haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you back. Um, where was I? Oh, I was. I was here. Uh, you can see, but like, I kind of decorated for the for July Fourth and everything. But um, you know, now there's 50 states. There was 13 back then. Uh, so okay, we got the usual stuff. We got uh, trivia cards. We got interesting food. For those um, who are wondering about it, because the name of the stream was the Bounty of John's Marketplace live stream, uh, it, John's Marketplace is a Middle Eastern and Eastern European grocery chain here in Southern California. I don't know how I don't know how far out they go. I don't know if it's if it's outside of Southern California. I assume it's a Southern California uh, a grocery chain. It's a relatively large grocery store. Um, but they specialize in um, in Middle Eastern, Mediterranean, uh, Eastern European uh, foods. And so everything that we have today, uh, everything that we're going to be sampling was from John's Marketplace. So, uh, Tom, I, I assume that when you say seems OK to me, you were, we were, you were referring to the audio and the video. It seems that the it seems like the lag on my side has gotten caught up. So I think we're OK. As long as the volume's OK for you guys, you can hear me OK. It's not too gritty or anything. You might hear a low hum in the ground background. That's because I have the fan on because it's supposed to hit 90 today. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a balmy 90 degrees, sunny, um, you know, but at least we're not Portland, Oregon. Um, uh, they've had temperatures over hundred degrees for, I think for a solid week. One, uh, one day it, uh, it reached 115. They're not used to that up there. They don't know how to handle that. Nobody has air conditioning. It's crazy. Uh, let's see. Give me two dollar coladas, one for each hand. Yeah, John, um, I uh, I haven't gotten back to um, I haven't gotten back to um, to Walmart to look to see them and everything. But I need you to I need you to send me a picture of that next time you next time you're at Walmart and have a picture of that because I can't find it online. Uh, I don't know if there's a spelling issue or something, but I can't I can't find it online anywhere. So I, I, even any mention of it anywhere. So it's kind of uh, uh, odd and and uh, elusive. So if you can help out by sending a picture, that would be really helpful. Uh, yes, you sound good. Looks well. I guess you look okay. Yeah, um, not bad for the uh, not bad for my age. I get. I guess. Uh, no sync issues here. The volume's okay. Perfect. All right. I love. I love it. Okay, John. Yes, yeah, de definitely take a picture of that for me and send it to me. I, I will go to Walmart um, after the stream. I will go and I'll check it out and I'll see if I can find. Uh, you know, I'll just look around. Uh, it is an alcoholic beverage, correct, John? Um, you know, it's not, uh, I guess it would be if it's a colada. Um, 
it, it should be an alcoholic beverage. I guess it's like a it's like a pina colada with beer instead of what is it? A pina colada is rum, I think, something like that. But uh, my sister in Oregon right now, and she it, oh, that's going to be annoying. Maybe we'll see. Um, the breeze is nice, but the blind smacking around not so much. Um, she is wearing jeans and a sweatshirt. What part of Oregon is she in? Is she up in the mountains? Is she on like Mount Hood or something? Because because other I think most of Oregon is is sweating, uh, really hot. So uh, hey, Food Taster TV in the room. Good to see you, Food Taster TV. Um, you had made a comment about uh, something. Oh, the the uh, dough that that we're gonna be uh, drinking. I'm, I'm gonna go over the snacks here in a, in a, in a few minutes. But um, I think you had made a comment about it, like, bring me some and everything. So I was wondering, because you saw what we're going to be doing today. And uh, and I was wondering, is are, are these kind of things difficult to get where you are in Canada, food taster? 8% uh, alcohol. Eh, it's, about, uh, it's about the same as a beer, right? I think. Rum. Thank you, Daniel Velasquez, who I did not acknowledge coming into the room. Uh, welcome back to the stream, Daniel. Good to see you again. Uh, let's see. Everybody's saying hi. It's all a nice day. Uh, so again... Uh, long weekend because uh, the 4th of July, or Independence Day, as we call it here, um, is um, when it uh, when it falls on the weekend, it's generally celebrated during, uh, you know, like, on if it, if it falls on a Saturday, it's usually celebrated on uh, July the 3rd, on that Friday. If it falls on a Sunday, which it does this year, um, then it usually um, is uh, recognized on Monday, so on July 5th is when everything's closed and everybody would be out celebrating. So a long weekend for a lot of people. Um, we also have, uh, so tomorrow, because it is Independence Day, we have our Trippy Food Independence Day special coming out. And that features Lindsay. So we did some recording with Lindsay today. I think you guys are familiar with Lindsay. You've seen her in our videos before. So uh, we did some um, we did some videos with uh, Lindsay yesterday. I think we did about five of them. Uh, earlier in the week, we filmed with... Um, with uh, Q the Critic, uh, with uh, Quincy. Uh, we filmed some episodes with him. Uh, we also filmed uh, some episodes with uh, Matt Zion and uh, Janice Yamanaka, and, and they'll, be in, they'll be in the videos together. Uh, we filmed some for Reckless Eating, some for Janice's channel, and some for Trippy Food. So we're gonna have a lot of uh, uh, Janice and Matt stuff uh, going on. So, uh, and, and then I, I have some more um, Dallas, um, Dallas V Sports. Uh, I have a lot, uh, some other Dallas uh, uh, episodes coming out as well. So a lot of stuff to edit, a lot of stuff to edit. Um, and then uh, tomorrow also, in addition to our um, our 2021 Independence Day special, we also have the, I think, well, I'm trying to remember what it was called, Mega Chicken Sam uh, uh, the um, Popeye's Mega Chicken Sandwich Invitational Challenge. That was that challenge was was issued by uh, Matt Zion and Sean Brotherton from uh, uh, Reckless Eating, and they reached out to a bunch of different channels. I think uh, Beyond Seattle Eats is in there. I think Main Event Pong might be in there. I know uh, Natter uh, uh, Freak Eating is in there, and the uh, the the concept is that um, we have to eat uh, three Popeye's chicken sandwiches. They don't have to be the spicy ones. But in, but in my case, they are uh, three of the chicken sandwiches. And basically what you do is you take um, you take uh, the, the top and bottom bun from one of them and you put the three pieces of chicken in between the, that uh, those uh, those two buns. And so um, so, again, it was an invitational challenge. And then all of the videos are coming out on the same day, which is tomorrow. So uh, be on the lookout for that as well. I don't know how the other people uh, did. I don't know if they're going for time. I, I don't know if they're going for volume. I if everybody eats it, I don't see how they're going for volume or anything. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I'm looking forward to seeing the other videos as well. And we have we have submitted a video for that. They aren't too easy to get. By the way, I think the name of the dough brand, Aaron, is supposed to be mocking how most Westerners pronounce Iran. Oh, okay. So I didn't know, uh, uh, Food Taster, I don't know that that's the brand because I saw somewhere where they were saying that the drink is called Aaron. So I, I uh, I'm not sure, um, but uh, but maybe maybe because the brand is Two Life, Two Life, like I am. Um, the uh, brand is called is Two Life. So I think Aaron Aaron is the type is the type of drink. Or maybe they're just saying it's an Iranian dough. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. 
Uh, I'm assuming it's it's dough, and I'm gonna drink it like that. So, hangover weekend. Uh, well, usually the hangover is the weekend. If you're drinking all weekend, the hangover is gonna be during the week. So that's you know. Uh, but if you drink in moderation, you don't have to worry about that. So, I can't remember the last time I had a hangover uh, because I drink in moderation. So, for me, uh, I, I'm an alcoholic. Uh, let's see. Today is Saturday, so it is trippy food beer night for me. So I will I will choose a uh, alcoholic beverage that I will enjoy later on tonight. But we won't be doing it on the channel today because last week was trippy food beer night on the live stream, and so today we're going to be doing soft drinks. So we'll discuss those in a second. Try working in a hospital this weekend like me. England football tonight is, oh, football. So, uh, Peter, it's funny you mentioned that. Uh, the first time, I think it was the first time uh, I was ever in the UK, uh, in, in L London area. And um, I decided to go into the pubs for food because I thought that, you know, it, it would just be like, you know, kind of, um, you know, you know, pub food, pub food, right? Uh, it's usually pretty good. Depends on the pub you go into, I'm sure. It's usually pretty good. So uh, we went into the pub. And uh, the um, the person who was waiting on us came over and said, said, uh, I'm afraid that uh, you'll have to leave by three. We're going to be closing at three o'clock. And I said, oh, well, what, what's going on at three o'clock? And they said, oh, there's a football match today at three o'clock. And I said, oh, oh, so you're closing so that you can go to the football match. And they said, no, we're closing so that uh, the people coming from the football match don't trash the place. So um, I guess it gets a little bit rowdy there. Maybe, maybe that was back in like 1992. So maybe things have changed since then, but um, yeah, uh, whenever there's a football match, um, I, I guess the uh, well, I guess everybody gets rowdy. I don't think it's I don't think it's um, limited to the Brits. So uh, it current it looks like it currently feels like 76 where my sister is in Oregon. That's not bad. I'll take it. Like I said, it's supposed to hit 90 here today, but uh, another place. Hopefully, hopefully it is cooling off. Hopefully, in other places in Oregon, it is cooling off. So that would be nice. They need it up there. I need some rain too you know how is it not raining up in portland but uh, this is not the rainy season the rainy season is like september through march um but things are changing so uh my brother is a surgeon peter oh okay yeah it's uh, uh and uh and uh, this weekend is busy for uh, hospitals and stuff because you know people end up blowing their fingers off and stuff with fireworks and stuff so yeah it's a busy weekend uh overcome by heat all kinds of fun stuff I'm going in an hour for lunch. We are having burgers. That's that's ironic. So so you're in Canada and you're having burgers on the Fourth of July weekend, and I am sitting here and I'm going to have you know um, uh, Middle Eastern, Persian, Eastern European food. So that's kind of ironic, I think. It's 95 degrees here with heat index of 103. Stay in stay uh, stay in the shade, John, and. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember because uh, I think for some reason I I seem to remember Austin ha Austin at least having some uh, humidity uh, down down where you are probably like you know between here there and um, San Antonio having some humidity not as bad as Houston not as bad as Houston but still some humidity anyone seen Snackhead Cowboy tonight uh, you not on the stream. You mean uh, like seen his episode or anything? We had three tornadoes touch down in Calgary. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure John King has seen his share of um, twisters as well, being in Texas. It's only 77 degrees in Harbor City. That's nice. That is nice. Here, it's it's supposed to hit 90. So let's see. We have, uh, it looks like by that little number, that makes no sense to me whatsoever. Uh, it says there's eight people. I, uh, I'm guessing... Uh, that we're going to have a small crowd today because it is a uh, long holiday weekend. And so I imagine people are out, you know, camping, boating. They open the state back up. Um, so, you know, uh, no mask restrictions. You know, everything's open, indoor dining. It's all it's all wide open, uh, maybe in anticipation of the uh, uh, Fourth of July holiday. And so uh, every, I'm sure everybody is out. Everybody is camping. Everybody is uh you know, traveling and doing all that um, stuff that they haven't been able to do for the past year. So um, so we may have a smaller crowd here today. Now, we'll wait about another minute or so, about a uh, quarter after, and we'll start going over the snacks. And again, we have our um, trivia cards. So hopefully the Cassandra will join us because she loves these cards. But if not, we're still going to read them anyways. And, you know, we don't actually read them anyways. We pretend to read them and we just have some trivia questions, um, you know, kind of pre-prepared uh tornadoes are fun 
they might be fun to watch, John. They're not fun to be in. Uh, that's why um, I, I lived in Texas for, I want to say like 12 or 13 years. And um, and I told people I always wanted to see a tornado, but um, but I never did the whole time I was there. And somebody said, why would you want to you know be in a tornado? I said, I didn't say be in a tornado. I said, see a tornado. Um, uh, here in Southern California, the big thing is earthquakes, right? So I have had, I have been in a few earthquakes, but you know, just a little rumbling and stuff, you know, not much damage or anything. I think this, uh, it, a six, the highest one was a six. Um, I would like to see, a, you know, like to experience a, you know, a serious, an earthquake, but you know, I don't want people to die. I don't want people to, you know, I don't want, uh, people to lose their homes or anything like that. So, you know, I just kind of want to see that, you know, to experience that. But but uh, not if people are going to get hurt. That so that's that's my limit. I don't yeah I can't I can't I can't imagine it's. I, I know people personally that have been through hurricanes and tornadoes that have lost their homes that have um uh, uh, I don't know they probably lost friends and stuff and they don't think it's fun. So um you know, uh, but again it is it is a, a force of nature to be reckoned with and as such is 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 very dramatic and interesting to watch. I think. Yeah, I, I would have figured you'd been in uh, in several because you you know you live in Tornado Alley, so I figured that was the same. We went to a good old fashioned small town parade this morning. It was fun to see everyone have a good time. Well, you're in a good old fashioned small town, so uh, that make that uh, that makes perfect sense, you know. So yeah, everybody dresses up. It's kind of uh, um, uh, it's kind of something that's lost in some of the bigger cities. They don't really do that kind of stuff anymore. But uh, the small towns they still do that, so that's nice, Tom. Uh, for, uh, two Fourth of Julys ago, he had a big one. He had a big one. Who had a big one? Daniel. Uh, oh, I live in Chino Hills already. Nineteen ninety one. Uh, Chino Hills was a big uh, earthquake in nineteen in nineteen ninety one. I think the one that people talk about. I was not here for it, but the one that people talk about is the Northridge quake uh, in Southern California. There, I mean, there was a big one. Um, uh, farther north, that that one where um, there was a, a baseball game going on, I think in Oakland, and um, and there was that big earthquake up there where the um, Embarcadero in San Francisco collapsed because it used to be uh, raised up, and it collapsed, and a bunch of people got killed because they were underneath the embar Embarcadero or they were driving on the Embarcadero when it collapsed. Uh, that one was pretty bad too. But the Northridge quake here, I uh, I I know people personally who were in the Northridge quake, and they just said it was horrible. Um, you know, buildings collapsed, uh, parking structures collapsed, and everything. I don't know what the if there was a death toll. I've seen uh, pictures of like um, I think there was a, a motorcycle cop or something. He was riding on an overpass. The overpass dropped. You know, st stuff like that. So kind of um, scary stuff. Uh, I've always wanted thunders and lightnings during one of my videos to add some excitement to it. You can't plan on that, though. Hopefully today that will happen while I'm recording protein bars tasting video later. Um, so what I would do is if that's going to happen, if you if it's going to be thunder and lightning and everything, you might want to um, use like battery power, you know, like uh, make sure your camera's charged, make sure everything's charged and use battery power for it because, you know, you don't want the, the power to go out. And then all of a sudden you're filming and, and nothing happens. I don't know. The, uh, the other thing is, if, if power goes out, what do you do for lights, right? Uh, so do you have battery power lights or something to have those ready and everything? That would be fun. That would really would be fun. Maybe like it would be cool if you had something thematic, right? Like uh, you were eating something that uh, that that there there would be some drama with what you're eating based on uh, lightning and thunder and uh, rain and uh, you know power going out and stuff like that. That'd be quite cool with maybe some like spooky spooky monster movie music that'd be fun val have you been to redding california i have been to redding california john um so there's not a lot to see there but um uh, uh what do they call it Su um sundial bridge sundial bridge is nice uh there is a bridge and and it is a gi it's a giant sundial so it's probably maybe about there's there's a sundial it's about 30 feet tall and there's like little grounds you can walk around hiking and stuff like that but uh redding was a common stop between LA and um, and uh, Portland, because it's about seven hours, bo you know, both ways. It's about seven hours to Portland from Reading, and it's seven hours to LA from Reading. So Reading was like a, a good stop. So yeah, stay stay there, stop there a few times. Ninety one degrees, already hot as balls. It is. Dan Daniel, remind me again. Well, no, you know what? Don't. This is on me. I have to. I have to. Um, I don't know. I never. I never did see it. Da uh, Daniel, where are you from? Uh, where, uh, what, um, 
what area. You don't have to give me an address or anything. Just, you know, general metropolitan area. Uh, Josh Gruber in the room. Welcome, Josh. Uh, Josh, I don't know. Let's see. Josh. Josh Gruber. Yeah, you've been you've been in the room before. But uh, welcome back. Have not seen you in a while. So, uh, Panama Red in the room. It's starting. To, now it's a party. It's starting to pick up. It is a party now. All right, cool. We got uh, we got Daniel Velasquez. We got uh, Josh Gruber. You have Panama Red. So um, we'll have some more people, I think. But um, but it's starting to pick up. It's starting to build. And 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 maybe what I'm trying to remember was it last week? We, we, no, we did one last week. It was the week before that we took we took the day off, I think, because we were uh, we were filming with uh, Reckless Eating in San Francisco. That's right, a week before. Right. Chino Hills, thank you, uh, Daniel. Val, what city do I live in? You live in New Braunfels, Texas, uh, I think, uh, unless you moved. I think you live in New Braunfels, Texas. New Braunfels, Texas. Then we've had that discussion before. Uh, Yee party, yep. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's cover our snacks, shall we? Uh, so uh, first on our um, taste cavalcade, we have these. Uh, these are New Bake. New Bake is the company. Uh, New Bake or the product name. Uh, New Bake uh, apricot honey phyllo crisps, and um, they look really interesting. It almost looks like uh, like um, rabbit food. Uh, but uh, f for those who don't know, phyllo dough is. Um, I think they use phyllo dough to make uh, a lot of pastries, but it's very, very thin. So basically what they do is they roll it out thin, then they fold it over, then they roll it out again, then they fold it over. And so they keep on folding it over. So it's, it's you know, multiple layers of very, very thin uh, dough. I think they might use it to make baklava, uh, phyllo dough. But uh, these are just crisps, phyllo uh, uh, crisp made with phyllo dough. Uh, uh, the, the product is called New Bake, or the company is called New Bake, and it is short for New Bakery. And these are from Croatia, from uh, Donja Lomnica. I think that's the name of the city uh, in Croatia. That's where these are from. And again, everything is from John's Marketplace, which is a Middle Eastern, uh, Mediterranean, Eastern European uh, grocery here. Uh, what city do you live in, Val? I live in Los Angeles. Uh, how far is the drive up to San Francisco? It is uh, about five to five and a half hours from Los Angeles. Um, if you're coming down from uh, Portland, it is uh, 10 hours. Because we stopped in Portland going back. I mean, stopped in San Francisco going back and forth. It was actually longer than five hours because we made multiple stops going up there. So we, we stopped to see things along the way. And uh, so it took a little bit longer than that. Try Beller potato salad. Beller. Okay, I'll look that up. Um, it, what is special about Beller potato salad? If I'm saying that right, Beller, I think. Uh, potato salad, John King. I'm half Croatian. Oh, interesting, Josh. Have you had these before? I don't know. Hey, Lynn 801 in the room. More Canada. You, can't, you can never have too much Canada. Why is this bottle leaking? It's a glass bottle. That's that's disturbing. Anyways, uh, so that's number one on our hit parade. Number two, these, which are uh, Agroyan's Marinated Okra. So Agroyan is a 100-year-old company from Armenia. These are marin It's marinated okra. I mean, we have marinated okra here. Uh, let's see what makes it different. It says made of vegetables. Well, I hope so. Um, I don't, maybe, the, maybe there's, that's their way of saying uh, it's vegetarian or vegan. I don't know. It's sterilized. That's good to know. They're sterilized. Ingredients, okra, garlic, salt, acidity regulators, lemon, and acetic acid. I think lemon is acetic acid or lemon has acetic acid. Um, store at a temperature of minus two, no, plus two, I'm sorry, plus two to plus 25 Celsius. That doesn't help me. Because because we in the United States who are enjoying our independence, we don't do Celsius. The whole rest of the world does Celsius, but we don't do Celsius. We ain't going to do Celsius. Um, I don't know why. We should. Everybody else does. And it's easy. It's like in tens, you know, one to 100. Like the temperature, right? Zero is freezing. 100 is boiling. You know, we, we say 32 to 212. Who remembers that? One, zero to to one hundred. That's easy. Um, 
but you have to get used to the translation. So you have to figure out like, uh, you know, when it's not, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe uh, some of our Canadians or our UK folk uh, can, can help out here when it's 90 degrees Fahrenheit here, how hot would that be Celsius? I mean, I could do the conversion, you know, online, but uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to. Um, keep the open jar in the refrigerator, protect from direct sunlight. I, I think that means once it's open, look, there's all kinds of things floating around in there, little bits of things floating around in there. That's interesting. That should be fun. Uh, it has sardines in the potato salad. That sounds good. I'm, I'm done with that, John. I'm going to have to check that out. I hope it's not a Texas thing only and we can get it here. Uh, hey, Bob, uh, checking in from work for a minute. How's things? Things are okay. It's hot here. Um, uh, for those who don't know, uh, I start work uh, this this week coming up. So it's like it's been a year, a year um, unemployed. Uh, I said, hi, Bob. Then Doodle came up and he's like, um, he wants some attention. You know what? He, he deserves a snack. He's a good dog. Doodle, would you like a snack? Here. Uh, how are things with you, Bob? Have not uh, seen you in a while, but again, I know that you you just got uh, work too, and you're working weekends because you know your industry uh, requires that you work weekends. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like these for some reason. I'm gonna have to get some more of those chicken ones that he likes. I want to see da eat, Val eat a hot dog with ketchup. That's kind of boring. I mean, I could, I would, I would do it. That's kind of boring. Right? Uh, let's see. Do I have hot dogs? I don't have hot dogs. I'll get some hot dogs. I would do it now, but um, that's kind of boring. I, I, you know, I'll do it, but you know, just for the just for the funny thing. Maybe I, uh, next week, maybe that's what I'll do, Stoner. I will uh, have a hot dog with ketchup on it. I will eat it so that you can see me eating a hot dog with ketchup. I, I, it's not like it. I, it's not like some people that I know who won't, won't be mentioned who would eat something with something on it and go, oh my God, this is disgusting or anything. I just, not my preference, but you know, I'll do it. And if, if you, if you would like to see that, let me, why don't we ask, why don't we ask the, the chat, right? Why don't we ask the chat? Uh, would you like to see me eat a hot dog with ketchup on it? Would that be, would that have any entertainment value to you whatsoever? If so, let me know. Yes, no, whatever. Thank you, Janice, on the congratulations. Um, I'm a little uh, uh, nervous about it because I really don't know what I'm going to be doing. I mean, I know in general what I'm going to be doing, but I don't know exactly. And so that's always interesting. But uh, but yeah, it should be interesting. Uh, I don't know how it's going to affect the channel. I know that if, I'm, if I was filming anything during the day, that's going to have to wait. So we'll see. But, uh, you know, some things take priority. You can get the Bella Potato Salad in all grocery stores. Well, in like maybe you can in H E B, but I don't know if you can get it uh, like at a Routes or a Kroger store or something or Albertsons. But I will look for it, John, because uh, it sounds interesting. P potato salad with sardines in it sounds really interesting. Lots of burgers and wings here. Hey, you know, for Fourth Fourth of July weekend, uh, um, Independence Day weekend, Bob. That's that. That's you know, that's what people are eating: burgers, hot dogs, and wings. What's the most exotic food you ever ate? Well, Jermaine, who I did not recognize, welcome to the room, Jermaine. Jermaine, I don't recognize your your name, having been in the chat before. So, are you new to the chat? Are you new to the channel? Like, have you been? Uh, are you a subscriber? Have you been in here before? Because I don't recognize your name. And if so, welcome, and everybody, please welcome to the room, Jermaine Gilliard. Uh, where are you from, uh, Jermaine? Uh, the most exotic food I ever ate, it, it's a tough one because I've eaten so many. I mean, like, like you could name an exotic food, and I've probably eaten it. Um, the, the, there's a few that I have not. I have not had a carl yet. Um, I have not had um, uh, kazumarzu yet. Uh, I want to eat those things, but I have not had them yet. I, had, uh, I don't know if you consider moose exotic, but I have not had that yet, and I want to. Um, but I've eaten a lot, like so much other stuff and, and the most exotic, that's really hard to say. So, um, uh, you know, I'm like, I guess what is the, re what is, what is the requirement for, for it being the most exotic? So like really, really strange flavor, um, you know, uh, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe, uh, uh, live octopus, it's not alive, but they cut the, cut the tentacles off and the tentacles still move around. Maybe that maybe that would be the most exotic food I ever ate. I, I'm not sure. Maybe it's the hanjio, which is a Korean um, fermented skate. 
um, that uh, is fermented in its own uric acid that smells like a wet diaper. Maybe that. I'm not sure. Ketchup is boring. It is, I think. I was hoping for a matte reaction. Well, you get a matte reaction from Matt, but I'm not Matt. Uh, um, somebody, I can't remember who it was, but somebody had mentioned or somebody said, well, like, why do you have Matt on your channel? Because you two don't agree on anything. I'm like, well, that's one of the reasons. Um, so, uh, so yeah, the thing is, is like, um, you know, if we had the same personality, we agreed on the same things, if we liked the same things and hated the same things, that wouldn't be interesting, right? That wouldn't be fun to watch. So that's the thing. So like, yeah, uh, you, you're not really going to get a Matt reaction on anything like that from me. I, I don't like ketchup. I don't prefer ketchup, but you're not going to get a Matt reaction from me. I'm trying to think of if there's anything that I would say that I would have that kind of reaction to. Like, I would just go like, no, I'm not eating that. That's disgusting. That's horrible. Not, not a whole lot. Hot dog with Carolina Reaper sauce. You are a, you are mean and evil, Peter Griffin. You are mean and evil. Hot dog with Carolina Reaper sauce. I, I put hot sauce on hot dogs. Um, the, the hottest I go is probably um, Scorpion. Reaper hot sauce, you know. Uh, that would be a challenge, I suppose. I wouldn't want to do that with a hot dog, just a regular hot dog, though. I would want to, like, step it up a little bit and use maybe some, some some sort of interesting sausage. That would be good with a Carolina Reaper sauce. I would do that. Uh, banana with ketchup. How about banana ketchup? Um, so, so Josh Gruber, you kind of remind me of, um, of John King a little bit because John King always throws out these things, and he's like, you know, pizza with mashed potatoes and, you know, stuff like it. But, but I think maybe he puts too many things in there. That are like, uh, but maybe just combine two things. This is all very interesting things, uh, but but um, but I'll look to the that like banana with ketchup. That does. That, that's kind of like a. I try to eat things on the channel that are either interesting, like maybe maybe they're weird, but they're from a um, uh, from a vintage recipe. Uh, maybe uh, I saw it some someplace online. Um, you know, there was a meme or something along those lines, but, but if you just kind of throw out things that like, let's put this on this, let's put this on this, let's put this on this, maybe not, maybe a little bit, uh, stranger because people aren't somewhere, aren't eating that or people somewhere didn't make that and, and uh, put that together. But, you know, like maybe, maybe we do like, uh, maybe we do a live stream where we just eat weird stuff like that. Like you, you guys give me a list of weird, you know, weird stuff and we do a weird stuff like live stream, which is not like some, not something somebody would eat on a regular basis, but just, you know, kind of, um, you know, so, something people eat because somebody said this would be interesting to eat. That's just me. Uh, time to eat hamburgers, hot dogs, wings, ribs, steaks, and finally salad. Oh, skip the salad. Uh, nachos and lots of beer. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, is it time though, Sonic? Uh, or is that tom like uh, tomorrow? Uh, no, nah, it's a long weekend. Why not start today? Finish tomorrow. Have some more tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, are you doing a uh, cookout? And we are calling it a cookout, not a barbecue. There's a big difference between a cookout and a barbecue. Barbecue is barbecue. Uh, cookout is like grilling in your backyard. That's a cookout. So Sonic, are you uh, are you doing a cookout for, uh, for the fourth? Uh, let's see that. Did I miss? Uh, I like Jufron. I, I like Jufron too, uh, Stoner. You're absolutely right. Um, so, because somebody was saying um, banana with ketchup, but not, they weren't saying banana ketchup, which is Jufron. So, well, we did we did uh, Jufron uh, on Trippy Food episode with Jufron. I think it was when we were doing the um, the bar bar s um, the bar s corn dog things, and I think we used the um, uh, banana ketchup. And I'm pretty sure. Uh, Stoner, if I, am, am I mistaken in thinking that you were the one that suggested that we try Jufrin? I, I think so. Yes, I'm new. Well, uh, Jermaine, welcome to the room. Everybody, please, if you have not yet, please welcome Jermaine Gilliard to our room. Uh, it's no big deal eating a hot dog with ketchup. In fact, uh, yes, do that because ketchup on a hot dog should be out. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, um, it's not, uh, a lot of people say that's not a thing, right? I mean, like, like, like mustard, yes. Ketchup, no, but but I know people personally that will put ketchup on a hot dog. Uh, just it's not my bag, baby. Um, now I was just watching a video on YouTube. UFO hunters, the Phoenix Lights, March nineteen ninety seven. Do you believe in space aliens? Uh, space aliens might be redundant um, unless you're you're you're. Um, uh, I mean, alien alien just means somebody who is or, or uh, uh, beings that are not from where you are from. 
I, I think that's what they mean by a, by aliens, space aliens, people from outer space. I don't believe uh, uh, space aliens in like um, like that they're people who look just like us from another planet. I mean, uh, I, I, uh, I am not naive enough to, uh, I'm not that naive that I would, I would assume that we are the only life um, on this planet. That's ridiculous. Uh, I, mean, I, I mean, I'm sorry, in the universe. There, uh, I'm just thinking that if there is life out there, it's not going to be life as we recognize it. So there we go. Uh, do you know the L.A. Beast? Uh, you mean, uh, yes, I do, uh, Josh Gruber. I have met uh, L.A. Beast several times. If you go to uh, his channel and you watch the episode where he is trying to steal and eat two ostrich eggs raw, I'm in that video. So, uh, so yes, I do know. Guinea pig. Uh, we did a guinea pig. Um, we did a guinea pig video, uh, John King. Uh, it is it was from uh, Machu Picchu restaurant in Somerville, Massachusetts. So uh, check that out. And uh, we eat guinea pig on that episode in a restaurant, uh, a Peruvian restaurant where they eat guinea pig. Uh, what I, I'm trying to mess up. UFO triangles have replaced flying saucers since the 1980s. Yeah, here's the, here's my my thing, right? People in airplanes, people traveling in airplanes. Uh, myself included, have taken pictures out the window of, you know, stuff that we see out the window. Really clear pictures of, of what's down below. Clouds, things things on those lines. All the pictures I've seen are these fuzzy things. You could just barely make them out. You would think that with all the money that we sink into our military, that, that you could equip those planes with a decent camera. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Um, when I was younger, I would eat hot dogs with ketchup and relish. Yeah, some people do, uh, Janice. Um, mustard and relish, uh, sauerkraut. There's a bunch of things you can put on hot dogs. Uh, I like to change it up every once in a while. Just put some unusual things on. Uh, with kumquat. Oh, Peter Griffin, kumquat relish. That would be good. That really would be good. On a, on a, on a hot dog, kumquat relish. It would be fresh, refreshing. It would be good, I think. What do you like on your hot dog? Me? Uh... If I, I, I'm just eating a hot dog for the sake of eating a hot dog, I'm just going to put some mustard on it and maybe some um, uh, maybe some sauerkraut. That's about it. But like I said, I like to change it up. I've put uh, brie cheese and seaweed on hot dogs. I've put, you know, I put a, a bunch of different things, and I change it up every once in a while, Panama. So, um, but uh, the basic one, like if I'm just in the mood for a hot dog, mustard and um, mustard and sauerkraut. That's about it. Val, do you believe in the Phoenix Lights? I don't know much about the Phoenix Lights. Um, so when you say believe in it, um, I'd, I'd have to look into it to, to see. So the question is, when you say believe in it, uh, do I, do I, are you saying, do I believe it actually occurred? Or do I believe it's a doctored photo? Or do I believe that it is uh, alien life form as opposed to um, something else that we just don't know what it is? I don't know. It's hard to say. Pickled onions ice cream with pinto bean sauce. That's what I'm talking about. That's the John King that we know and love. It's the one that just throws out all these weird combinations, but like puts maybe too many things on it, but still. Do you know Swiss fondue? Uh, like Swiss cheese? Like melted cheese fondue? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm done cheese fondue. Uh, I don't necessarily know that it was Swiss cheese, but I hope that answers your question. Thou should host UFO Hunters on the History Channel. Maybe. Um, do you know Recline? Yes. Uh, so uh, my brother Philip, who is not here today, but he's usually here. Uh, I had Reclet over at his house uh, when he was living in New Jersey. Um, I stayed overnight with him, and then we had this big dinner party where we had Reclet. It was fun. It was enjoyable, and it was delicious. So my family's doing a barbecue. Cool. Uh, your video is lagging. That is bad. Really badly, Sonic? Trivia cards. Yes, we are going to do trivia cards, but we have to. We haven't even gone through all our foods yet. Have you finished telling us about snacks and drinks? I have not, Janice. Thank you for keeping me on track. I've been, I've been side, uh, I've been um, preoccupied with the chat. So let's do this, Janice. Janice, I'm going to go ahead and do that, uh, but I don't want to miss anything. So Janice, if you can kind of remind me uh, that somebody made a post that I need to reply to. Uh, I mean, uh, respond to what you know maybe after I, I do this, that would be great. Because, you know, we're already at a half an hour in, more than a half an hour in, and I haven't even gotten through all these. So let's let's do that. Let's finish that. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. Uh, this is uh, Zergut. I think I'm saying that right. Zergut. 
uh, Zurgut Stuffed Cabbage. And this is from, uh, the company is um, owned by Indo-European Foods. It is, this is from Bulgaria. And it is cabbage leaves stuffed with rice. So that's stuffed cabbage. Uh, pigs, I think some people call them pigs in a blanket. Um, cabbage leaves stuffed with rice. So that sounds interesting. Um, I'm going to try those. Uh, this one, this one is interesting because uh, it, it's kind of like along the lines of spam, but uh, but yes, but not really. Maybe um, it looks really generic. Uh, so this is the company is Sokolau, and it is cured pork loaf water and binder product. I don't know what that means. Maybe it's just like a bad translation. Uh, this is from um, Jaroslaw, Poland, and um, it is a. Uh, Pork loaf, water, and binder product. The thing that I find interesting is they they say to serve it chilled, so they so you don't heat this up. I don't know if it's like a pate. This shows slices of it, but how do you slice something in a can like this? Something circular, like it, it doesn't look circular. I don't know. I have uh, also got this wasn't uh, this wasn't on the list, but I have uh, the company is Baducho Baduco. I'm not I'm not sure how that's actually pronounced. Little little toasts. And we're going to put that on the little toast and everything. The reason I didn't list the little toast is it's toast, right? I mean, you know, there's nothing exciting about toast. There may not be anything exciting about this, but it's just cured pork loaf, water, and binder product. It just sounds bizarre. We're going to eat that. Uh, this, uh, which is the one thing, ooh, that's weird. It looks solid. That I hope that's wrong. I hope it is not but it looks solid. There's no way that's good. Um, this is Two Life uh, Aaron Do. Uh, do, do. It, it's hard to pronounce the right way. Do, it's D-O-O-G-H. This is just D-O-G-H. Um, it is a fermented uh, yogurt drink. Uh, sometimes there's salt added to it. Uh, this one is uh, mint flavored. I've had it before. Uh, I've had Do before. Uh, but uh, but not had mint flavored. Uh, sometimes these are fermented and they have effervescence, but this is saying to shake the bottle before use. So apparently it's not that. Um, oh, it doesn't sound that solid. I was nervous about doing this because, like I said, sometimes um, sometimes it is um, um, heavily fermented and it has a lot of effervescence in it, and doing something like this would make it, um, which would be fun for you guys, but maybe not so much for me. And then last and certainly not least, this I found interesting. This is like leaking all over the table. That's not what I found interesting. I just found the bottle interesting. Uh, this is, um, the company is Nadaktari, uh, and it is uh, Fejoa, Fejoa uh, Georgian lemonade. Now, Fejoa is a tropical fruit. It is found in the in Caribbean countries, uh, like Colombia even, and um, uh, it is also called a pineapple guava, a Brazilian guava, a fig guava, or a guava steam, although it is not a true guava. Uh, it is something completely different. I can honestly say I've never had it before. This is what the fruit looks like, um, but it is uh, a lemonade uh, mixed with this this particular fruit. So something I've never had before. I'm really looking forward to it and interested in it. That is our um, that is our cavalcade of uh, of snacks. I think I'm going to open the dough first. Just be, do do do. Uh, first, only because, um, I don't know, because, because. So what I'll do is I'll do beverage, snack, snack, beverage, snack, snack. How's that sound? Sound good? The other thing that occurred to me is, is really, I have the makings for a meal here. So it's not so much like, like usually I'm doing snacks, I'm doing like chips, pretzels, this stuff, stuff along those lines on it. I'm, this is like really the makings of a meal here. So uh, we'll leave it in that progression. So we'll do the crisps first, like kind of a light snack before then we'll get into, we'll do the okra, then we'll do the cabbage leaves, and then last and certainly not least, we'll do the meat. Uh, dough is very carbonated, so don't open it right away. <laughs> yeah, now you tell me, uh, food taster. No, I've had it, I've had it before, uh, but, you know, I've never uh, never shaken it up like that. But it tells you to shake it up, so very carbonated. That Now I, I'm, I'm suspecting I might have made a serious mistake. Uh, okay, Val, maybe you're a believer. I am too. Uh, well, maybe I'm a different kind of believer than you are, Sonic. We were talking about um, uh, alien life and everything. Uh, again, I don't necessarily think that there are people who look like us who are flying in spaceships that look like something you would see on a science fiction movie and everything. 
um, I, I don't even know that that uh, they that whatever life would be would be capable of interstellar travel. They may be uh, capable of interstellar travel through thought or through light or something. You know, uh, life may just ha have taken on a completely different form, and it may be so advanced that you know, because light speed it takes a while. You know, and and the thing is, uh, if you think about if you think about alien life, uh, if they are traveling. Um, Maybe they're technologically advanced that they have light speed. Maybe, um, but if not, and uh, you know, it, and it takes them like um, hundreds or thousands of years to get here. Like, are they all dead by the time they get here? So I don't know. I I don't know. Let's put it that way. Uh, let's see. Now my video is okay. That's good to know. Avocado cob avocado cobbler with beer cheese curds. Man, John, like, how do you even make that? How would you even make that? I like the sheep's milk cheese zergut mix. I haven't had that. And I thought I will try that. Oh no, no, wait, maybe we did. I'll have to check that out. I'll to, I'm gonna I'll go back to John's and see if they have that. Cabbage, no thanks. I don't like it. Oh, okay. You know, some people do, some people don't. Uh, Matt doesn't like cabbage either. Uh spam corn beef can. Um like a corn beef can, but maybe not like a spam can, spam can square, you know. Uh, cheese toast, yogurt milk, do is delicious. Very, uh, okay, we, we already got that. Lime club soda, you have to shake do because otherwise it'll be separated, but don't wait at least five minutes before opening it up. Thanks, Food Taster TV. Important safety tip. Favorite movie with aliens? Aliens. Uh, maybe your dog is an alien. M maybe, but I doubt it. Um, uh, uh, it, it I, I don't know the whole thing about mammals and reptiles, like, you know, first you had fish, and uh, I don't know. It, it, I don't know. I wasn't there. That was billions of years ago. So. All right, uh, we can get started, I suppose. Uh, you guys ready to get started? When um, you, you had me rethink opening the do, 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 do. Uh, you have me rethinking opening that right now. I think we'll wait on that. Uh, let's open up this first. So we're going to do beverage first. But this requires a card. Oh, uh, before we get started, um, I was waiting for Julie to be in the room. She hasn't been on for the past couple of weeks. So I was kind of waiting for her to come on. So I, I wanted to share with you. you. You see that this big open spot right here? So for um, for uh, Father's Day, uh, Julie had sent me a couple things. One was this can of ass-kicking spicy pickle peanuts. Um, I would tell you how these are. I would share these with you. I would eat them today. However, we already filmed uh, eat, eating these with uh, with Quincy, with um, Q the Critic. And so I, so I will not show you that. Uh, and then you can watch the video and then you can see what we think of these when we when we actually eat these. But these, these were part of the Father's Day gift from Julie. The second part of the Father's Day gift from Julie. Hey, Ice Fish in the room. Welcome, Ice Fish. Good to see you again. I hope Julie is okay too. Yeah, she's. I, I've seen her posts and stuff, so she is okay. I think she's just really busy. I think she was at a wedding last week, last um, last Saturday, and you know the stuff with the kids and everything. So I think she's just been busy. Uh, so this uh, this is a Funko. Um, I don't know if it's a bobblehead per se, but this is Bob's Big Boy. And so um, we did a Bob's Big Boy episode. We did one with uh, Matt Zion from Reckless Eating. They did a, 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 a episode. They they ate the fried chicken. We ate the uh, the Big Boy uh, burger itself. Uh, but anyways, this was a gift from Julie. So what what is um, kind of on my mind, and one of the things I was talking to Claudia about it is, I love this, but I kind of want to put it on the shelf there out of the box. And then she says, well, don't take it out of the box because... That you know it loses its value if it uh, if you take it out of the box and I'm like well, what if, what fun is it if you unless you can ha you know have it and maybe even play with it every once in a while so I'm gonna leave I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out to the chat what do you guys think should I leave it in the box and put it up there or should I take it out of the box and put it up there I'm gonna leave it up to you I mean like maybe if I save the box it's okay it's it, and still you know valuable or whatever I don't know I don't know but I'll leave it up to you guys tell me what you think in the box out of the box all right so there we go. Uh, again, I was kind of hoping Julie would be here when I did that, but that's okay. Um, avocado chocolate, chocolate covered corn syrup beer. N you can't. I I don't. Even, I wouldn't even know how to do that. Uh, don't wait to open. Oh, don't wait too long. All right, then I'll open it next. I think it's been more than five minutes. We'll do that first. All right, there we go. 
Unbox it 100%. Leave it in the box. Carefully take it out of the box. Mm. Open the box. Leave in the box. I'm going to have to go back afterwards and look at all these because it, it seems like it seems like it's it's maybe like half half of each. Open it if you want to display it on your shelf. That's my thinking, but you know I could be wrong. Okay, anyways, let's do the do, do the do, do the do, do, do. I I'm not sure the exact pronunciation of that. I think it's do. All right, heard a little bit of um, gas release from that. It doesn't smell sour. Like, like I said, some of these can be salty. Uh, some of them are not flavored. This one is mint flavored. Some of them are not. Um, I will say that um, the very, very first time I ever tried this, uh, it came in a clear glass bottle. And I looked at it. And if you look at that, what is your first thought? Your first thought is milk, right? Your first thought is, oh, this is going to taste like milk. And so your brain goes to milk, and then you taste it, and it is like the farthest thing from milk that it could possibly taste. I, I guess I, I guess it's similar to Calpico. If you've ever had Calpico, uh, very similar. Like it looks like milk, and you think it's going to taste like milk, and then you drink it and it tastes nothing like milk. But cheers. Ooh, that one's salty and sour. I'm not getting the mint though. Ooh, that one's really tart. Yeah, a lot of, uh, it's like a lot of acid. There is a lot of bacteria in there, good bacteria, because it's fermented, probably a superfood. Uh, ingredients, water, whole cream, milk powder, salt. Yeah, you can definitely taste the salt. Um, Peppermint flavor. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give that a thumbs up. Um, it's saltier than some of the other ones I've had. Um, food taster, have you had brand before? Because it, it definitely tastes saltier than some of the other ones I've had. But uh, it's uh, very similar to uh, lassi. If you've ever had lassi in an Indian restaurant, uh, that's it's very similar. It might even be the exact same thing. They're just a different name. Yeah, that salt is like, takes some getting used to. I didn't ask a trivia question, so I'm gonna have to backtrack. So so we're gonna have to pretend I haven't drank, I haven't drank that yet, which I gave a thumbs up to. And we'll ask a, tri a trivia question. So our first trivia question is, what is in beer that makes it non-vegan? Again, the question is, what is in beer that makes it non-vegan? So that sits over here. We'll talk a little bit and then we'll answer the question as if we asked it before we decided to open up that uh, dough. Uh, Val, mix it with Pepsi. Remember the black? No, no. Uh, that's Pepsi milk. That uh, Sonic, did you see our Pepsi milk episode? We did a Pepsi milk episode. <clears throat> um, we, we actually did Pepsi, Pepsi milk. That would not work in Pepsi milk because that is not milk. That is a fermented, salty, mint-flavored um, uh, yogurt beverage. So uh, I... I I didn't know what would happen um, with Pepsi. Like, I think all bets are off. That would uh, probably just dis destroy your stomach. I see old, uh, Tom saying, hi, G Money. I miss G Money. Hi, G Money. Welcome back to the room. Uh, fish scales appear to say, oh, okay, people are answering the question. We'll give it a few more minutes. Uh, Arvand is a huge do brand in Canada and made, it's made here in Canada. Oh, okay. Well, this one is not made in Canada. Uh, but I didn't know if you've had this one uh, before or not. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Come on. This is a. Uh, this is not a like. Uh, it's a hot day. I think I'm going to like like um, uh, chug or or guzzle this uh, drink. It is a a slow sipping drink. It is. It, it tastes like. It tastes like it's a meal. You know, it tastes like it's 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 like it's like food, more than more so than a drink. Um, it's not it's not what I would call refreshing at all. Um, uh, I think maybe the mint is meant to make it seem refreshing, but it's really not. 
I haven't tried this brand before. Sadaf is the most popular brand, I think. Yeah, uh, and, as, and as a matter of fact, uh, John's Marketplace has a lot of Sadaf groceries, uh, gross uh, Sadaf, Sadaf foods. There, I think the prop is probably the most pro popular brand in the world um, for um, for Middle Eastern, uh, Mediterranean, and uh, Eastern European foods. Uh, hey, Stoner John King and Food Taster, I remember saying hi. That's nice. I chug do all the time. Yeah, but here's my thing about chugging. Like, I, I'm not opposed to it. Uh, I think uh, I did the, uh, um, if you guys missed that, uh, last week, uh, Tom challenged me to the uh, sparkling ice uh, chug challenge. So it was basically to chug a bottle of sparkling ice, which we did. Um, the thing is, um, it, it's kind of like, um, what is the purpose of chugging? Right. What is the like? What would be the purpose of chugging this? Is like to be able to uh, to be able to get the nutrition from it without tasting it because because you're you're like you're downing it really quickly um, because because I think that's that's the problem is when you chug something you're you're not really tasting it just just like uh, uh, when you're doing competitive eating and you're eating really really fast you're not ex you're not experiencing the taste you're not savoring it um, and so uh, so like I said I'll do chug challenges every once in a while. But usually it's something I'm not really invested in, and I don't really care about the flavor or something along those lines. So that's just me. Uh, Val, whatever you're drinking now looks like something all men carry. You know it rhyme. Yes. Um, uh, yes, Sonic. I, I, I do know what you're saying. And um, and let's hope that it's not. Uh, it is white and yogurt substance. That's exactly what it is. It is a white yogurt substance. Uh, thank you, Peter Griffin, for uh, reminding Sonic that. Uh, he he likes to uh, he likes to uh, push the envelope. He likes to just try to step over that line. Um, I chug it and it and taste it that way. I'll always have it when it's still cold. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Uh, okay. So uh, maybe whatever Val is drinking is good for male fertility. It is a health drink. It is a health drink for for absolute certain because it is fermented and it has good bacteria for your gut. So it is it is very uh, it is a healthy drink. Um, the thing is, a lot of people might not like it uh, because um, again, it's one, it's fermented, and two, it's salt. So some people might not like that. It's teens, young adults establishing manliness when chugging. That's all it is. Yeah, uh, Jesse. Like I can see if you're if you're. Oh, by the way, hello, Jesse. Uh, I can see if you're competing, right? If you're competing, you want to see who can drink something the fastest. That's fine. But I mean, just to just to like chug for the sake of chugging, that it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But that's just me. Uh, let's see. Did I miss anything? Uh, Val, can I can I just say you are one of the awesomest YouTubers I've ever known? You can say that. I don't know if it's true. Well, actually, if, if you say it. I'm one of the awesomest tubers, YouTubers that you have ever known. That's fair. That's fair. If, if you can say, if you say I'm one of the most awesomest YouTubers ever, that's open to debate. So there we go. Uh, all right. So let's go back to our trivia question. And we're pretending that we asked before, which we didn't do. And the question was, what is in beer that makes it non-vegan? And so the answers were, that was a while back, wasn't it? Let's see. Leave it in the box. No, that wasn't about that. Um, kefir is similar to Tulasi. Yes, it is. Uh, they're all similar. They might actually be the same thing, ice fish. Uh, let's see. Fish scales to separate the beer and make it clear. Uh, hold that thought. Uh, yeast. I don't know if yeast is considered an animal product or not, um, uh, or, 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 or plant, because it's, it's an active thing. It's I, like, I don't know if it's like bacteria. I don't know what it is in yeast. It's kind of an active thing. It's a, like a live thing. Uh, but I don't know if it's an, if that's considered animal or not. Uh, gluten uh, it wouldn't be gluten because gluten is not um, gluten is plant based. Gluten is there. I don't know that there's gluten in animal product. I don't know that. Gelatin that's interesting. Uh, kumquats uh, old guy that unfortunately that is uh, the kumquats are vegan. Uh, kumquat hops still vegan. Uh, was that the only answers? That was the uh, oh, uh, Lin Ada one says yeast. Um, generally, yeast is not listed as one of the things that um, that is in beer that would make it non-vegan. So I'm thinking yeast might be bacteria, and maybe bacteria doesn't count. Uh, maybe yeast is is, is plant-based. I honestly don't know, uh, but it's usually not listed. So 
the things that make beer non-vegan is uh, isinglass, which is a form of collagen obtained from the dried swim bladders of fish. So somebody said uh, fish scales. It's not from the fish scales. It's from the swim bladders of fish, but it is from a fish. Um, and it's used for uh, clarification or fining of some beers and gelatin. So those who said gelatin were correct as well. So that's what that's what makes beer non-vegan. They, they do have vegan beer. It apparently does not have those things in it. And, and I don't know how important those things are in, uh, for beer. I don't like what I think. If I'm not mistaken, and this would be interesting, and maybe that should be a tri trivia question for for another day, I'm pretty sure that the um, Egyptians invented beer, and I don't know what they put in it. So we'll have to check it out. Uh, let's see. Did I miss anything? I probably missed a lot of stuff. Uh, sorry, uh, we missed your stream today. I got to work. Uh, well, Jesse, thank you for stopping by. It's always good to see you, and I'm uh, glad you could stop by and have a great day at work. Uh, Amy in the room, Amy Cakey in the room. Welcome, Amy. Good to see you again. Uh, hey, Ryan, I'm watching on my smart TV. Cool. Uh, will we see any Anshu's products in the near future? Uh, not sure. Um, uh, we were going to do something for the 4th of July, but it didn't work out. Uh, it was going to be very impressive, but it um, just didn't work out. So, uh, uh, But maybe. Uh, I, I will talk to Anshu and see. Uh, Tybalt, hey, welcome, Tybalt. Good to see you. Val, are you a big drinker? Does the reckless eating gang get you messed up when you guys hang? Yes and no. Uh, I am not a big drinker. Uh, I am a lightweight when it comes to alcohol. I enjoy alcohol. Uh, like I said, Saturday is my beer night. I have one beer, uh, and uh, and I don't I don't chug it and I don't drink it to get drunk. Um, however, if you go back and you watch the we go main the reckless eating we go main show in Las Vegas. Uh, we stopped in a liquor store and everybody got something to drink that we walked around on the strip with, which surprised me, but apparently you can do that. And, and no one gives you a problem about that. And I had a, a Clamato, uh, Budweiser Clamato <clears throat> Michelada one. And, um, and the, the result of me drinking that can be seen in the segment that we uh, filmed at the uh, Secret Pizza in the, um, what, uh, what, what casino was that in Secret Pizza? I want to say the Metropolitan, like Cosmopolitan, in the Cosmopolitan uh, Casino. Um, and you can watch. Uh, but in general, no, I don't get messed up. Uh, sometimes uh, sometimes when we're filming, uh, we're, uh, I'm, I'm tasting something alcohol. Like, a, like We might do like a Four loco tasting. And then by the end, I've I mean, I want to taste like that much of like maybe five of them. And by the time I do that, you can hear me like slurring some words and stuff like that. But not not like totally messed up or like I'm passing out or puking or anything like that. So, G Money, I hope that answers your question. Val, I'm drinking Shiner Bach. The last, John, the last Shiner Bach I had was actually, uh, if you go to the We Go Main Show in Las Vegas, again, uh, we stopped at, uh, in Good Springs, at the Pioneer Saloon, and they had Shiner Bach. And I had not had a Shiner Bach in a long time, and I thought it was appropriate because it's kind of this Western place, and I had a Shiner Bach. So, uh, more power to you, John. Uh, let's see. Uh, any videos that you drunk Val? Just that one, Peter. Just that video. And 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 I'm not like 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 wasted drunk. Just that. So um so you can get a you get an idea of what I'm like when I'm let's say tipsy, not drunk, right? Uh, yo Val, yo Steve Russell. Welcome back, Steve Russell. All right. So that was our first beverage, our do, and we're gonna drink some more of that. That saltiness is just it's odd but uh all right so let's let's start with our snacks and work our way into the heavier food so we are going to have this um again this is what this is new bake apricot honey phyllo crisps sounds really good i'm looking forward to this but trivia question first so the question is what type of food is the peanut what type of food? What food category is a peanut in? Um, and 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 uh, that it, I'm looking for something a little bit more, more specific than vegetable. So, uh, what type of food is the peanut? That goes in the back burner. And let's uh, let's see. Okay, we said we we're going to do the phyllo crisp. So let's go ahead and open those up. Doodle didn't need a snack. I don't think he likes those snacks. It's important. Doodle's happiness is important to me. Janice, did I not read the card? 
Did I not do a card? What type of food is a peanut? Or, or, or am I late? Val, have you ever had a firework go off in your hand? I have not because I don't like fireworks. So I, so the answer would be, would be no. Those are attractive. It looks like uh, um, it looks like pumpkin seeds, maybe. Pumpkin seeds on that. I suppose I could look at the ingredients, but what fun is that? There we go. Very attractive. Do you enjoy sushi, Val? I love sushi and sashimi. Yeah, uh, very much so. Hey, the Cassandra in the room. We started. We hey, we just asked a question, so you can jump in on the fun. Uh, did you hear it, the Cassandra? The question. It was, uh, what type of food is the peanut? I'm not looking for vegetable. I'm looking for something specific. So, the Cassandra, feel feel free to jump in. That is interesting. It just looks like a single 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 layer of phyllo dough with uh, with nuts and berries and stuff glued to it. It's very interesting. That's kind of out of focus there. Let's see. There we go. Mm. Amy, I have not been able to find ube ice cream at Trader Joe's. I've been looking for it. I have not been able to find it. And when I ask them, they go, no, they don't have it. So maybe the Trader Joe's near you has it, and Trader Joe's near me does not. But um, I think I can get ube ice cream, though, at... Um, um, Hawaii supermarket or 99 Ranch market. I might try that because I haven't tried it, but um, I, I would love to. Maybe we'll do an, ep an episode on it. We'll do a tribute boot episode on it. These are good. These are tasty. They're not overly sweet. Uh, there's honey in it, so I would think it would be really, really sweet, but it's really not. It's kind of nutty. It's almost like a trail mix. Mmm, that's tasty. They're very nutty, like me. Yeah, that's gonna get a thumbs way up on that. Really, really tasty. I don't know if it's an appetizer or dessert. We're we're eating it like an appetizer. Um, well, really, they barely out of them, I believe. Um, yeah, I just I can't find them there. Um, but. To be fair, a lot of a lot of times I'll go into a grocery store and I'll say, "Do you have such and such?" And they go, "No, we don't." And then I'll I'll, I'll do a little searching. And I'm like, "No, it's right here." So then I go back to the you usually go back to the person who told me that they don't have it and go, "Oh, by the way, for your reference, they're in aisle eight. Um, so maybe that's what it is. Maybe they do have it and they don't know. But you know, the frozen food section at Trader Joe's isn't that big. You know, have you ever tried the ube pie from Jollibee? Um, food taster, I have not. Uh, the thing is, I know Jolly, Jollibee is an international uh, chain, uh, the Filipino uh, restaurant. Uh, we do have Jollibees here, but they they may not all have the same thing. You're in Canada, so your McDonald's has different stuff than ours. Your your Burger King has different stuff than ours, and your Jollibee might as well. I have had the Halo Halo at Jollibee, but I don't think I've had the Ube Pie. So I'm a Ube Ube Ube. Uh, I will. Uh, I will, next time I'm at Jollibee, I will check to see if they have it. And if they have it, I will try that uh, food taster. See if they have it. Hey, Drafe, welcome back. Another European in the room, Drafigo13. Welcome back. Good to see you again. Actually went for the body butter, but apparently it's gone and sold out all Trader Joe's. Wow. Yeah, they sometimes they have stuff and sometimes they don't like. Um, um, I don't think that that's aired yet. We did, we did a follow-up on the spaghetti rings. Uh, with Matt, and I think we had a couple of other people on there too. Maybe it was Nat Nando and um, Biff, and um, and one of the ones we did were the Joe O's, uh, and they don't always have those, so um, th it's like a seasonal thing. They don't they don't always have them. Um, green beans and green cheese sandwich and <laughs> jelly beans. Wow. Uh, tried the ube pie from Jolly Bee and uh, ube mochi. Mochi. I always say that wrong, Janice. Janice, you get, help me, Janice. Help me. Uh, we filmed uh, we filmed some uh, some stuff with Janice and Matt last week, and uh, we stopped at um, we, we one of the things that we got was uh, a squid ink hot dog, and uh, and we I, and we were talking about mochi nut or mochi nut and, and whatever it was I was saying it wrong and I'm probably still saying it wrong. 
can't get get used to that. You need it. I don't. I gotta learn. Um, really dislike Jolly Bee spaghetti. Well, um, uh, it's not supposed to be Italian spaghetti. So if that's what you're used to and that's what you're expecting, I'm not gonna taste like that. Their sauce is much sweeter, for one thing. Uh, let's see. Let me see. Val, I'm surprised you had to enlighten Matt on who Randy Rhodes is, the guy who appears to be a rocker. Doesn't know much. Yeah. Well, you know. Um, I didn't have to do that when we went to Frank Sinatra's grave. So uh, that one is uh, coming up. It should be in the next couple, the next couple of weeks. The uh, trip we took, we took out to the desert. We went to Frank Sinatra's gravesite. He knew who Frank Sinatra was. I think we did. We we try to do like one of those. Uh, the L.A. episode. We went to a cemetery. So there's a lot of people in there. Some he knew. Some he didn't. So we'll see. My hum uh, husband's coworker makes a killer ube crack brownies. Wow, that does sound good. Uh, the new s'mores cookie from Pyology is super yummy, especially if you're a chocolate lover. I will have to check that out. I've not been to a Pyology. I only I need to do that. All right. Uh, let's see. Ah, the question. Because we ate the snack. And the snack was a th big thumbs up. The question was, what type of food is the peanut? And the answers were, uh, let's see. What were the answers? Uh, Ice fish said legume. Uh, Stoner Kitchen said legume. Janice said legume. Uh, Tom says, it's citrus related to kumquats. Uh, I don't even care if that's wrong. It's great. Um, the Cassandra said legume. Linnea one said protein legume. Stoner said like baklava, but I think he was answering some other question. Uh, John King said it's a ground plant nut. Uh, uh, so the thing is, it's called a peanut, which would make you assume that it is a nut. It is not a nut. Uh, it is referred to as a nut, but nuts come from trees. And um, uh, and so it is not actually technically a nut. But uh, but they call it a peanut, so people assume that. So, you know, hey, don't blame me. Uh, you are all correct. It is a legume. So uh, other, other things that are legumes, peanuts, beans, they're all legumes. So... Which is really weird because peanuts, uh, because um, beans and um, peas, they grow above ground. Uh, peanuts grow below ground. They're 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 attached to the roots. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that. So time for another question and another. Let's see, one snack. Yeah, time for another snack. So I think what we'll do is we will do the okra. We'll do the okra next. So again, uh, it is uh, Agroyan's uh, Okra, and Agroyan is a company from Armenia. They're over 100 years old. We will try the okra, but we will ask a question first. And so the question is, uh, what food does someone with celiac disease need to avoid? Again, the question, what food was, does someone with celiac disease need to avoid? That goes over here. It might be the back burner. It might be the front burner. I don't know. It's just going here. How about carrot cake fizzy beer? Uh, John, there is a company. Uh, it is called Eagle now. It used to be called, what did it used to be called? I want to say Young's, but it might not be Young's. But it's called Eagle now. And they do a, um, they do a banana bread beer. And you need to try it because it tastes like banana beer. I'm, I'm, I'm banana bread. I'm, I, very seldom do I have a beer where I, I, I go, it tastes exactly what it says it tastes like. But that one does. So um, I, I think it was used to be called Young's. And now it's called Eagle. Eagle banana bread beer. Um, most uh, most well-stocked uh, liquor store, I mean, like uh, places like uh, BevMo or um, Total Wine and More would have it. They also have it at uh, Cost Plus World Market. I recommend you try that. It's really good. Mochi. Thank you, Janice. You, it, just keep on me on that one. It's going to take me a while. Mochi. 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 All right. I will get it, I swear. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Did I miss anything? I, I, okay. You know, people are just answering the question. That's, that's cool. All right. So we are going to eat the okra. Not Oprah. Okra. <clears throat> It smells like pickled vegetables. <clears throat> it's um, it's interesting because usually, I mean, I've had pickled okra before, uh, but it's usually bigger and greener. So I don't know if it's a different variety or they get them when they're small. You you don't you don't want uh, a, an okra to okra will grow pretty big. 
So uh, if you just let it go, I mean, it'll grow like that long, but it's inedible by the time it gets that big. So uh, most, most people harvest it a lot smaller, but these are really tiny. Cheers. All right, take that back. So the ones I've had, I mean, pickled, they don't usually have a lot of other stuff in it. They're just pickled. And this has garlic and some other fun stuff in it. Ooh. That's interesting. Uh, this is more like a, a brine. It's not like a vinegar. It's like a salt brine, which I, I prefer that. Like pickles, I prefer with a salt brine as opposed to a vinegar brine. They taste fresher, you know. Not not really, really crisp, but fresher. Um, firm skin. That's really good. I was going to get a thumbs up for me. I like that. I mean, it's my vegetables for the week. Groyans marinated okra. Who knew? I didn't. That's why I bought it. Uh, let's see. What did I miss? Um... On this episode from it came from a jar. But that's the only thing we have from a jar. We have that from a jar, and we have two things from tins. We have one thing from a box, and we have two things from bottles. So it's a, it's a, a whatever it is. Uh, the question was, beside, uh, no, the que that was not the question. The question was, what food does someone with celiac need uh, a disease need to avoid? I think everybody got it, and everybody said gluten, 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 gluten. Um, Tom said kumquats. I don't know if there's gluten in kumquats. I don't think so. I, mean, I don't think meat has gluten in it. Uh, my friend and sister are both celiac. My friend and neighbor makes the best banana bread. Well, oh, that sounds good. Yeah, celiac is a thing like, you know, people poo-poo, people -poo, you know, they stick their nose up in there and they're like, oh, gluten, blah, 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 blah. Seriously, uh, if you're a celiac, it can kill you. Uh, I do know people who are celiac, and so it, it's it's not like they go like uh, I I I'm allergic to glu to gluten, or I don't like gluten, or whatever, you know, in a restaurant, and they, they order the gluten free, and that's fine. Or some people will go like I think it's better for you if you get something that's gluten free, if you're not celiac, um, that's fine too. But uh, but uh, yeah, it's a real thing. So um, and and it can kill you. So yeah, you're all right. Everyone gets a hundred percent, a hundred points, hundred points each. So mark that down on whatever you mark that down on, because I'm not keeping track. All right. So uh, that was, uh, let's see, we did snack, snack, beverage, snack, snack, time for another beverage. So we are going to do this beverage, which is the uh, Nada, Kat, Nada, Katra, Nada Katari. Nada Katari. I did that. Uh, with um, feijoa uh, fruit, which is a tropical fruit found in the Caribbean. Uh, and Caribbean countries. And I've never had that fruit before, so it'll be interesting. But this is Georgia lemonade from Georgia, not the state, the country of Georgia. Uh, but time for a tribute card. Here we go. The question is, oh, this is a good question, and it's a follow-up question. Besides wheat, what other grains create gluten? So the question, besides wheat, what other grains create gluten? And if you just if you just give me one, that's fine. So uh, something else besides wheat, a grain that creates gluten. Uh, hint: it's not oats. All right, that goes over there, and we open our bottle now. I, I did bring uh, Richard Simmons because I thought I was going to need him, but I don't. It turns out I don't because this this is very very interesting. There's like a little pull tab here to open the top of the bottle. So very interesting. Ooh, that was a satisfying sound. And it just tears the top right off. Look at that. I think we're going to save that. Looks like ginger ale. Very bubbly. Wow. Now it's called lemonade, but maybe that's just a, a name because I don't taste lemon in there. Yeah, now is not a good time to tilt the bottle on its side to look at the ingredients. That would be painful. Not painful, but it would be wet. Let's see. Ingredients. Water, sugar, carbon dioxide, 
So far, it's just a beverage. Na natural identical aroma. I have no idea what that means. Citric acid, food grade colorant, benzoate. All bets are off. It could have it could have lemon in it. It might not. I don't know. I can't tell by the ingredients. I'm not tasting a lot of lemon in, in there. And I don't know what that fruit's supposed to taste like. So I just have to decide, is it good? And I'm going to say, yes, it is. It's not overly sweet. Um, there's a lot of bubbles in it. I like bubbles. It tastes fruity, but not in a way that I could point my put my finger on it. Almost, um, almost like um, pineapple or passion fruit, maybe. That's good. That's gonna get a thumbs up, thumbs way up. That's really, really good. On a on a hot day, that's refreshing. That is really, really good. Um, let's see, our question, besides wheat, what other grains create gluten? And people were saying grease and salt. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, the peanut flour is pollinated above ground before it enters the ground. Oh, interesting. Uh, not answered our question. Let's see, Stoner Kitchen said rice. Uh, the Cassandra said rice, barley, and rye. Janice said barley, rye. Uh, triticale and farina. Uh, Ice fish said spelt. John King said flaxseed. Uh, Jen is corrected that there is no gluten in rice. Rice flour is often used to replace wheat flour. Uh, I think that was it. I think that was it. Well, the correct answer is uh, rye, barley, malt, brewer's yeast, and any wheat hybrids. So anything that's not like wheat per se, just straight wheat, this is a hybrid of wheat. That would that would be included. Rye, barley, malt, brewer's yeast. Uh, Janice, you met you mentioned triticale, and I know your your um, method of research is usually pretty accurate. So that's one that I missed. Um, but uh, I, I, can you tell me what that is? What triticale is? And I mean, I'm even pronouncing that wrong. That's like my Italian upbringing, uh, trying to pronounce that. I may be pronouncing it wrong. But um, but can you tell me what that is? Because I've never heard of it before. Uh, I was hoping for a good snack today from, from the stream. My fiance comes in with multi multi berry applesauce and bacon cinnamon buns. That sounds good. Uh, tell Brian we well, you know what? He's watching it. Hi, Brian. Welcome, welcome back. Glad you could join us with, with the Cassandra. <clears throat> All right, so we did the beverage. I'm gonna do something really stupid right now because that's how I roll. This is this can't end well. This can't end well. It tastes like cheese. Why does it taste like cheese? It almost tastes like feta cheese. That's weird. So I'm mixing these, mixing the two things, these things together, it takes away the saltiness. So it's not as salty. The yogurt part of it's still there, so it definitely tastes like some sort of dairy, like, like I said, cheese. It it it, it has a, a taste of cheese, but it's carbonated. It is weird, but not in a bad way. That's bizarre. That is really bizarre. Why is that good? That has no right to be good. No right whatsoever. But it is, for some strange reason. That's good. I don't get it. I mean, I really don't get it. I don't get why that's good. Takes away the saltiness of the of the dough. Um, the, minting, the mintiness of the dough really wasn't there. I mean, I really wasn't getting a lot of mint. So that's not there. Um, I'm getting the tanginess, the, the tanginess. The tanginess could be from the dough, but it could also be from this. I'm getting the fruitiness and 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 an almost a cheese flavor. And it's not bad. It's 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 actually gonna get a thumbs up. This is one of the weirdest combinations 
that actually works in the history of me put that don't belong together. I mean, seriously, I'm, 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 I don't know, speechless. <laughs> I'm never speechless. Don't worry about that. Um, Judah Colley, if I'm saying that right, oh, uh, the name comes from Star Trek, Quado Triticale. Tritic, it's Triticale? Triticale? Tri how do you how do you pronounce it, Janice? I don't know how to pronounce that. It is a wheat rye hybrid. Oh, okay. So so basically, when we said wheat, any wheat hybrids, that would be included in that. Okay. I, I just didn't see that, but um, I I I had not found anything that's made with that. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look into that, and maybe maybe for one of our uh, upcoming episodes, we'll do something that has that in it. But I still want to know how it's pronounced. Because the Italian in me wants to say triticale. Triticale. Hey. Uh, hey, how you doing? It's a nice day. Um, nothing like a refreshing glass of feta. I know that sounds weird, Stoner, but it is really good. I, I, I've never had a cheese drink. I've never had a, ta a drink that tasted like cheese, and I never in my my years ever, ever imagined that I would say I had a drink that tasted like cheese and it was good. And, and this is, and I don't know why. I'm, I'm perplexed. I, 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 I will always be perplexed about why this actually tastes good. It shouldn't. It has no right to taste good, but it does. It's so weird. Um, Jesus. Is that the answer to a question, or is that just like um, like um, shock? One of those kind of things. Avocado, onions, pickles, pizza, and sausage, fermented bean curds. There's just not, a, not enough things in there, John. You think you need to add some stuff to that. That's just it's too simple. He says sarcastically. All right. Uh, we did answer the question. Yes, we did. <clears throat> uh, as best we could. Uh, we did two beverages. You no, know, we did a beverage, two snacks, a beverage. It's time for two more snacks. So we're getting into the into the uh, the more dinnery uh, portion of this. Uh, I think we're going to do that, that, that potted meat last. And we're going to do zergut cabbage leaves stuffed with rice. Again, uh, stuffed cabbage leaves is... Um, uh, I've, I've been in some Jewish delis that had that, and I think they call it pigs in a blanket. I, I think, but pigs in a blanket might have like sausage or something else in that. Um, so I, I might, I might be wrong. That happens sometimes. In Star Trek, they pronounce it with "kale" at the end. Triticale, triticale. Well, that's almost what I was saying. I think. Did Lester's fixins ever make a cheese flavor? Uh, I bet they have. I don't recall offhand because they do some weird flavor. Like they did a ranch flavor, ranch dressing flavor. It's not good. Uh, okay, let's. So, wow. Once you take that 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 thing off, like it's just a nondescript white can. That is weird. Time to ask a question. And the question is: Love you, Val. Going for lunch now. Well, food taster, we are going to be here for another half hour. Uh, we get two more snacks left. Uh, we're going to be here for another half hour, so if you finish lunch early, please join us. If not, we will see you again soon. Uh, the question is, what is the difference between unagi and anago? Again, the question, what is the difference between unagi and anago? That goes on the back burner, or some semblance of the back burner. The, the thing, the, the table, the edge of the table. And we're going to go ahead and open up our grape leaves. I brought a plate because you never know when you're going to need a plate. Always bring a plate because you never know when you're going to need a plate. Somebody tell me who I was imitating, and then I'll know whether I did a good job or not. Ooh, that's weird. That doesn't look like any stuffed grape leaves I ever had. It's packed in oil. I don't know if that's good or bad. I've never had grape leaves packed in oil. You guys can see that. I don't want to tip it because then it'll go all over the keyboard, and I don't want to have to clean that up. Uh, let's just pull this out with a fork. They're kind of packed in there, so I don't. Oh, they're adorable! Aren't they the cutest little thing? I was expecting like a you know full like you know roll like that. But they're just little bite-sized things. Those are adorable, and they're 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 meant to be eaten at room temperature. 
I think it was room temperature, or maybe even uh, serve, let's see, refrigerate after opening, consume within five days. Shouldn't be a problem. Ingredients, rice, cooked cabbage leaves, water, onion, sunflower oil, uh, carrots, salt, mint, that's interesting, uh, black pepper, paprika powder, citric acid. I don't see oil. That's weird. I don't see oil listed as, oh, no, saf safflower oil. That's right. Okay. That's fine. Cheers. Now, I have had stuffed cabbage leaves with rice before. These are really strange. The texture of the cabbage it just melts in your mouth. You don't have to chew it. You don't. You wouldn't need teeth to eat this. It just falls apart in your mouth. The cap. I mean, like cabbage. You know, it's a leafy vegetable. And it has some texture to it, and it usually, no matter how you cook it, it requires some some sort of chewing. This one doesn't. Yeah. The the nice thing about that is, it doesn't require chewing, and they're bite sized, right? So it's not like you have to bite a piece off. You just put it in your mouth, eat the whole thing, and again. You don't need teeth to do that. These are these are pretty good. Uh, they are unlike any um, stuffed grape leaves that I've ever had. You can see uh, they did say carrots, and you can see like there's little orange pieces in there, so you can actually see the pieces of carrot in there. Also, the grape leaves are really thin, so I don't know if they use like a baby cabbage or something, or what variety of cabbage they're using. Very very thin leaves. Those are good. That's gonna get a thumbs up for me. Again, like nothing I've ever had before. That's really good. Again, any of these, uh, if you if you have like a Middle Eastern grocery, Mediterranean grocery, Eastern European grocery, I recommend checking these out. So far, everything has been really, really good. I've not really had anything that I uh, have gone. No, it's not gonna work. I'm gonna be like sipping on both of these things today. And in doing so, I don't know if they're gonna fight it out in my stomach or not, but I'm gonna do it anyway. You going up to Sacramento or up north to do some food reviews? Well, G Money, uh, I went with um, Matt and Chris, both the the OG reckless eaters. Uh, I went with with both of them up to uh, San Francisco uh, to do a Weagle Main show. So it was up and up up one day, back the next. Uh, we did a bunch of stuff. There's still stuff left to do, but that was in San Francisco. But we're always looking for other places to go. So I imagine uh, I imagine there, there would be a, a Sacramento in our future. So um, so yeah, uh, I, I would not rule that out at all whatsoever. Uh, G Bunny, if you have any suggestions uh, of unusual things in the Sacramento area that we should check out, please let us know. Uh, love anything with cabbage. I don't know that I love everything with cabbage. I, I like I like um, kimchi. Kimchi's cabbage. I love kimchi. Uh, no cheese soda from Lester yet. Maybe you should give him the idea. Uh, I didn't, Les, Lester fixing soda, like, like I would say more times than not, they miss the mark, right? So more times than not, their, their soda is like, it doesn't taste like what it's supposed to taste and it's not good. I think the closest, the closest I ever had on any, um, Lester fixing soda was the corn, uh, the corn soda. And it really, it really tasted like corn. I mean, we really had a corn flavor in it. Most of the other ones just don't hit the mark. So, you know, if I tell them a cheese soda, I, I, I don't even know what that's going to taste like. And the cheese is going to make a difference, too. Like I said, this one almost tastes like a feta cheese or, the, or that combination almost tastes like a feta cheese. But, you know, like if it tasted like uh, blue cheese, would that be a good thing? I don't know. I don't know. Blue cheese. <laughs> and then Stoner Kitchen says blue cheese would be interesting. Yeah. Well, interesting. It, I will. I'll go along with the interesting. It would be interesting. You need to go with Matt next time he comes to Arizona. He said he didn't like it, but he was in Gilbert. People don't. Uh, Stoner, uh, that is sort of incorrect. Uh, so, so we are going to do a We Go Main show in in Arizona. We're going to drive to Arizona and do a We Go Main show. Um, we were going to do it in July, uh, but uh, but because of the oppressive heat, we have decided to table that until at least September. So, so it is definitely on the um, on the itinerary to do Arizona. Um, it's just, it's going to be later in the year because we, we don't want it to be so hot. So, um, 
That's the last thing you want to do is break down in the desert in the middle of nowhere uh, in the heat. It would not be fun. So, uh, so yes, Arizona is definitely in the plans. I don't know why you, you would say he doesn't like Arizona because he was all for I – mean, I float the ideas. This is, this is for reckless eating. It is his channel. And so he is responsible for making the decisions on what we do and don't do. I could I could throw something out there and go, hey, Matt, what about Tijuana? And he was like, no, we're not going to Tijuana, right? So it's up to him where we actually go. I just throw the ideas out there. And one of the ones, the early ideas I did throw out there was Arizona. And he was he was cool on the idea. So um, so it's going to happen, Stoner, at just um, not as as uh, not as early. We again, we had planned to do it in July, but again, we just looked at at how the heat is, and we thought, you know what, let's table it till the till the fall. We'll do it in the fall when it's cooler, a little cooler. So, yeah. uh, the chocolate bake chocolate bacon. I don't. I had. I think I had a bacon um, Lester Fixins, Tom, but I don't remember if I had a chocolate bacon one. I don't think I had that chocolate bacon one. I'll have to go back and see. I don't know. I've done so many things over the past few years that I I look I lose track of all the stuff that I do. He said Gilbert Sutton was boring. I agree. Stay away from Gilbert and Mesa. Well, they weren't on the itinerary. I think Tucson is. I think Good Goodyear is. I think uh, I know Phoenix is. Um, so uh, I, um, uh, Quartzsite definitely is. So um, so yeah, I did not have Gilbert on the itinerary. So uh, we'll leave it off. There we go. Fried bologna beer. John, you're focusing on beer a lot. So, so, um, I don't know how these things would translate to beer, like, like, uh, so the soda thing too, it's like, uh, people are, are talking about the blue cheese soda and everything. So, uh, I mean, fried bologna is awesome. I don't know how, how many of you guys had it, but I had it as a kid. My mom used to make fried bologna and basically what you do is she, she'd, uh, it would just like the Oscar Mayer bologna in a package, right? No, I mean, nothing special. You don't have to go to the deli and get the, 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 the you know, the fancy.